Um, my name is Sean Darrington, uh, Senior Director of Product Management here, and we have a few minutes before, uh, before lunch is going to be brought in, so I wanted to do two quick things with the demo, show you a little about the usability, and then show you about the expansion of growing from single nodes into uh, two seven node rings. So one of the things that we talked about in uh, Tad's session in depth was the continuous data protection. So what I have here is I have two one blocks. Uh, they're set up in separate rings, but they're not actually paired with one system. So this is literally, customer takes them out of the box, puts three drives, power, network, and turns them on, and this is what you see. Uh, in the finder, this is just in the network view, and this is the default uh, ring name for that given one block here. And what you'll see is that the public share uh, is available for reading and writing without uh, any configuration on the user's part. Right. Uh, from this, you can simply drag and drop files as you would expect with any other you know, traditional network attached storage solution. In this case, it just looks like an SMB file system. Right? Um, this is something that as files are being written, we're taking those continuous snapshots of. And so if I come down here to the lower window, this is the same uh, finder and go into the same one blocks. I'll open up the public share as well. But in this case, I'm going to have the snapshot directory uh, open and available here. And so after I write in files, obviously I can read them back, and here we've got Christopher Walken uh, in Weapon of Choice. In the snapshot directory, I can navigate down to the date, hours, time, and find the particular files that were just written into my file system. Right? And this is what we continuously do in the background. So if, as a user, coming here into the top left window, this is actually local to my Mac, I have the exact same file name, but yet this is a Steve Jobs and Albert Einstein video. And so as a user, if I drag and drop that into my one blocks, I get prompted for the replace or keep both option, right? Well, in this, in this case, I'm going to actually replace it. And so now, in my primary share, I have Steve Jobs and Albert Einstein and no longer Christopher Walken. But if I go back into my snapshots well, we as a user... need more cowbell. What's that? We need more cowbell. You can actually um, see the different times and the different points at which the snapshots are taken. So now I have both Albert Einstein and Steve Jobs in the snapshot that I just wrote to the file system. Or if I want to, I can go back and get Christopher Walken back from my snapshot and recover that back to my primary share just simply by copying and pasting that back to the primary share. And again, because it's the exact same file name, I get the keep both replace option, right? So that's just a very simple example for file serving and the continuous data protection uh, that you can do. Now this is also something that, as I mentioned, has not been actually paired with one system at all. So from an administration standpoint, I haven't done anything except turn these on, and the public share is created. So what I'm going to do now is show you guys two things. Number one, how quickly storage is added to an existing one blocks, but then also how quickly and easily remote replication can be set up. And so from here, this is how we discover the one blocks through one system. Tad talked a little bit earlier about the Netflix pairing option, and here you can see I have a number of one blocks on my network, and I know that these two behind me are one blocks 274 and one blocks 500. So now what you're going to see is the pairing code show up on the LCD. 55514, and then that's going to now associate my ownership of this one box with my one system account. Similarly, you'll see on the other one, 11802. And now within one system, I have two separate rings that I can begin managing. Right? And this is one of the things that as you start to manage storage, you can add shares, you can integrate with Active Directory, all the traditional and normal things that you would come to expect. Who has set up mesh or d remote replication for storage in less than two minutes from storage systems? Okay, okay. start two the clock. Two and a half, maybe. Right there, right there. How, how, how two soon? Two and a half, maybe. Two and a half yeah. minutes? Okay. Oh, well, so this is something that you can choose which of the rings you want to be the primary, right? And so here I'm going to call this SFD7 mesh. And now, I'm going to be able to say I have my one blocks there on a particular network. I can either do a static IP or reserve DHCP. Because these are actually on the same network, I don't have to worry about going through a firewall or external IP addresses. No and I have the option to turn in-flight encryption on uh, or off in this case. 
Now this is the per share that we were talking about before where customers can actually decide which shares they want to replicate from one location to another. And it doesn't have to be an all or nothing, right? But all the shares in the primary are read-write and all the shares in the secondary are read-only. And so here's my confirmation page and now I have the opportunity to confirm with my one system password that I actually do want to create these shares. Whoops. In encryption between nodes also over the network? Uh, yes, you can do encryption in flight, so the traffic that's flowing from one to the other. Oh, so now I'm going to exceed my two minute mark potentially. <laughs> you got five more seconds. One time. I got the stopwatch going. So we should get that edited onto the video at the bottom, a little clock. <laughs> <laughs> and it's instantaneous. I, I'm not going to trust Stephen with this watch long enough to do that. No. <laughs> I know he covets it. <laughs> All right, and there we are. You had 25 more seconds left. 25 more seconds? Good. All right. <laughs> so that, that's literally as easy as it is to set up a mesh. Okay, that's two minutes. He's already done. He's done. Oh, he's done? Oh, yeah. Keep up. He was done with 20, 20 25 seconds, seconds to spare. So now I'm just powering on six more one blocks in each ring to do a seven node. So you can hear the fans going because they're starting up. They'll quiet down here in just a minute. But I wanted to show you how easy it is to take not only mix and match drives, you've got multiple three terabyte drives here and a four terabyte drive. If you'll notice, there's 10 terabytes of unformatted raw capacity shown there. This is a six terabyte HGST drive. Okay, Howard, do you have your stopwatch ready? Yep. Go. So I'll move out of the way so you can see the, the blinking light. So this is basically recognizing this is unformatted drive. It's formatting it for the one blocks file system to be and making that available for use. You'll see the green light here, it's been initialized and recognized in one system. Well, WebEx delay here. Um, let's show up in just a second. It's green here. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Apple TV. Yay, WebEx. Oh, WebEx is frozen. Oh, there it is. It's WebEx and 37 Apple seconds, TV. Yeah, including no WebEx. Like on top of delay. All right. So now. <laughs> There's 16 terabytes of storage available, right? <laughs> Thanks, Cisco. Appreciate that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Apparently, it's only concerned with... We love Cisco, you. really, yeah. we do. Exactly. Allow so, me to rephrase that. We are, love WebEx, really, we do. Yeah. So now, what we're going to do, uh, just I'm not going to do any other configuration, right? And so this is somebody starting with just two single nodes, and obviously adding up to seven terabytes, seven additional, six additional nodes for a total of seven with zero configuration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this on this page. We're going to take a short break, and then I'm just going to show you the web page after it's done, and you'll have two seven node mesh configured. Any questions before we take a quick break here in just a moment? Is this a normal level? This, the fans now? No, they'll spin down as soon as the uh, You'll see the startup screen go through a couple of things where it starts to recognize the drives, initialize, and then it'll spin down to what you were hearing before. Yeah, as you say, they were pretty quiet previously. Yeah. That's, uh, that's max fan speed. Okay. So if you've ever had two racks wow, that, in a data that's center max. that's 100 degrees, yep. that's what you're going to hear. It's still quieter than the other. That that's quiet for max. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's quiet for... for that's not bad at all. Oh, that's yeah. not bad at all for <laughs> whatever. Normal. Minimum for yeah. something. <laughs> at, at power on, we run the fans at max until we get enough enough sensor data to understand what the real ambient yeah. temperature is. Cool. 